Shauna? So the benefit of a trust then is just to ensure that basically your time, you don't have to worry about all of the, the smaller things and then your trustee. No, there is a much larger benefit to a trust. Okay, what's the a benefit? trust avoids probate. Probate goes right through there. Let me explain. Shauna, I want to borrow $10 from you for lunch today. So you loan me $10. On the way to lunch, I die. I'm hit by a car. Technically, you have a legal claim against my estate for $10. It's a debt I owe you. You can make a legal claim against the estate of Raymond Modulin. So you put in a, a petition and we go to the reading of the will and all of that. And you go, I owe, Raymond owes me 10 bucks. And then my attorney goes, Shauna, Raymond has no assets. He died penniless. And you go, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. He's got that property at 13th and LaSalle and he's got one at 38th and Emerson. And, and the attorney's gonna go, oh no, those aren't Raymond's. Those are owned by a trust, which is an artificial separate person. So you have a claim against me, but I don't own real property. So for a second, let's do it this way. For a second, let's take out the word trust and we're gonna put the word Cameron in there. So when I deeded my property to Cameron, who owns the property? Cameron, right? So now I owe you money. Can you go to Cameron and collect if I owe you money? No, because Cameron's a completely separate person that is not involved in that $10 you gave Raymond. So now take the word Cameron now, and put the word trust in. When I'm the trustor, I deeded the property to the trust. Who actually owns the property? The trust does. You now come to me and go, oh, give me money. You owe me a dollar. I don't have any assets. But that property at 38th and Emerson, no, 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 that's not my property. That is the trust's property. So I avoided all of those debts that now people come to get me because I have no toys to sell to pay that debt off because I don't own those 13 houses. A trust, i.e. Cameron, some other person, I just merely benefit from Cameron collecting the rent and being a nice guy and handing me the rent and go, here's the benefit, Raymond, for the property I own, thank you. And I go, well, thank you, Cameron. Now take Cameron out of that and put the word trust in. The trust would collect the rent and then the trustee would write the beneficiary a check this month. And I'd say, thank you, Mr. Trust. But the trust owns the property. So when people come looking for me to owe them a debt, I'm going to go, sorry, I can't sell anything to pay that $10 back to you. I don't own anything. Sarah? So you do that with like your cars and things like that too? That anything that- You can. You can. Now, trusts do not give you the legal protection that a corporation would. Because I, as a beneficiary, I still have an interest in the property. So the judge can find out if I have an interest and could attach that interest in the property. Corporations are a completely different thing. So if you're going to start a business, you would want to put it in a corporate name, not really a trust name. Trust is more of a holding entity. 
So I could put my car into a trust and name Raymond as the beneficiary. And then if something happens, they try and sue Raymond. I'm going, well, that's not my car. You can't get to that. That Ferrari is not owned by me. It's owned by a trust. And you can put money in it. You can put personal property. You can put real estate. And typically, you don't mix them. So if I put a car, it's a separate trust. My real estate would be in a different trust. Money would be in a third trust so that you don't want to mix your asset types. There are people that put so many properties in one trust and so many properties in another trust. They split them out. All right. Cameron. So say you got into an incident where someone did like a Liz pendant on you. Is that Liz pendant going to go on the trust that you have? It would well? go on the property. The Liz pendant would go on because I have an interest. Yes. It would not go on me until mm -hmm. it actually becomes successfully awarded by the court. And then it becomes a judgment. And then the judgment goes against me and all of the real property. Judgments awarded by a court are actually what they call a general lien. So they go against the person and the property. And we will talk about that when we get to liens. It is a general lien which attaches to both real and personal property. This section right here, people have trouble with this. And the way that I always think about it, and like I said, it, just take the word trust out and put in somebody's name and it kind of makes a lot of sense. Now, you can't sue me because Cameron owns the property. You can't sue Cameron for the $10 Raymond you gave Raymond. That's Raymond's debt, not Cameron's. Take the word Cameron out, put the word trust in. All right. Now, when you create that trust, it is created either at two points in your life. If you create it while you're alive, it is called a living trust. My trusts that I made are living trusts because I made them while I was alive. If I have a will, and when I die, my attorney reads the will, and the will instructs my attorney to create a trust so that I can put money in it for my children, that is called a testamentary trust. The word testate means to die with a will. The word testate means to die with a will. So if someone dies, testate, they die with a will. So the adjective of that or adverb, and I'm not one of those people, the testamentary trust is created after I die. And it's created because my will created it much like Conrad Hilton's was. When he died, his will said, put a million dollars into this trust and then dole that money out. Your grandmother, Cameron, I'm not sure how you got awarded that money. If her will said to give you the money or if she gave it to you before she died. Slightly the same thing. All right, so it's a living trust or a testamentary trust, depending on when it's made. Before death, living. After death, testamentary, because it's they die testate and their will said to create it. We have land trusts. You can assign that beneficial interest to someone else. My trust is giving me the money and I'm the beneficiary. I could actually assign my beneficial rights to Cameron and he would now collect the checks every month. All right, just assign him the interest rate. 
Now, there are up three other living entities I want to talk about. Three other ones that are technically considered an artificial person. They are a partnership, a corporation, and an LLC. We have a partnership, a corporation, and an LLC. A partnership is a legal formation of more than one person lined up to do some sort of business uh, and create a profit. A partnership would require two or more people and they are classified as either a general partner or a limited partner. A general partner, and it works under what's called a partnership agreement. I really like this little toy I found. They work under what's called a partnership agreement. And a general partner gets to make decisions. That's the upside to his ability. The downside to that is general partners are on the hook for whatever decisions they make. You are the general partner. You decided to do this. Whatever you did cost us a lawsuit. You're now on the hook for that lawsuit. Whereas a limited partner downside they get to make no decisions the upside they are on the hook but listen to what i'm telling you they are only on the hook to the extent of the amount that they participated in the partnership so if they get sued for a million dollars, the general partner's on the hook for all million. The limited partner may have only put $100,000 in the deal. They get sued for a million. He's probably or potentially only going to be exposed for the $100,000. He's limited in his exposure. So that would be his upside. So you'll notice they're exactly opposite, which makes sense. The guy that made the decision to do this should be the one responsible and be on the hook. The one that maybe didn't want to do it but had no decision, his exposure is limited to whatever he got exposed to. All right, that's a partnership. Corporations, there is the C Corp and an S Corp. They are run by a board of directors and they sell stock. Now here's the key. A corporation, whether it's C or S, is technically seen as an individual person. It is a one person entity. Even though there are million shareholders and 12 people that sit on the board, it is still one person. So when a corporation goes out and buys real property, they buy it as a sole person, which is called what? Severalty, remember? So even though they're guided by potentially hundreds of people or thousands of people through stocks and board of directors and CEOs and chairmen. The corporation itself is one entity and it buys property in severalty. It buys property in severalty. The third version of this is this thing called an LLC. 
the LLC, think of it like a hybrid between a partnership and a corporation. It has the same protection as a corporation, but it's taxed like a partnership. And each partner gets a K-1 statement at the end of the year, and that K-1 goes directly on each person's 1040 tax form. And my K-1 would be taxed at my personal tax rate, where your K-1 would be taxed at your personal tax rate. They are called flow-through entities. So a LLC and the S Corp, this specific one and this one are what they call flow through. Meaning those don't make money. All of the profit goes straight to the owners or loss in some fashion. And it's based upon however it's split. If Sarah and I are 50% owners in an uh, S corporation, the thousand dollars at the end of the year that's in our bank account, she gets 50%, 500. It would be taxed at her rate. Maybe she's really rich, so her tax 38%. I get 500 because that's half. But I'm a little poor, so I, mine's taxed at 18%. Because they're flow through meaning it flows right through to the owners, all right? They are actually also seen as an artificial person and would own property in severalty. So corporations, LLCs, all of those. Any questions on those three entities? No? All right, the rest of this chapter, feel free to read, but I will pick it up and cover it tomorrow in tomorrow's section on legal addresses. So at this point, this chapter is virtually complete from a class standpoint. Now I know that that could pose a problem because you go and do the questions at the end of the chapter, there may be a question about condos and co-ops. We'll pick it up tomorrow so you'll know the information before the test. Any questions on what happened today? All right, go somewhere quiet and think for a second. Joint tenants, tenants in common, get them in straight. Think of that once again, tenants in common, that's all they share. Joint tenants are mixed, so they, Share gets divided amongst the survivors. Any questions about this chapter? Rock and roll, Hoochie Coo. Right, rock. Freebird. Oh, wait. All right. Sarah, are you pushing the goodbye button or the speaker button? Oh, I thought she was going, goodbye. I don't like cell phones anymore. One of the things I used to do with my brother all the time, and we started doing it to our mom, is the old landlines, you know, when you hang up, you could actually hear it go, crack, crack. We used to say, hey, what's this sound like? Crack, and then hang up on them. So that's where I thought Sarah was going. All right, any questions? Three, two, one.